First chapter, starting at the first verse. Genesis, first chapter, beginning at the first verse. Amen? Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth was without form and void. And the darkness was, was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of That it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. In the evening and in the morning was the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divide the waters which were upon them, up was under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Mm -hmm. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers, doers of his holy word. Amen. 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 How many of you love the Lord like I do? Yeah. How many of you really, really, really love the Lord like I do? Because he's heard this morning. He's strong on our way this morning. He's a wholesome God. He's a God never made a mistake. So we pray you right now. Thank you, your grace and your mercy. Amen. Amen. May we pray. Father, we come thanking you right now just for your grace and your mercy, Father. Yeah, yeah. Father, we know your God that never make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Father, you made good to us down through the years, Father. You're the same God then and you're the same God now. Yeah, yeah. So we say thank you right now, Master. Yeah, yeah. Father, somebody may be going through something this morning. Yeah. Just don't know what a little talk with you will do. Mm -hmm. Father, you are awesome right now. So awesome. Father, just touch New Emmanuel as a whole right now, Father. Yeah, yeah. Not only New Emmanuel, every church house around, Father. Bless you to touch Melissa with as she come and bring your word this morning, yeah, Father. Yeah, yeah. Just be in her right now, Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just bring her out of self and let her be in you. Yes, Cause Father, you are awesome right now, Father. Yes, we know that you are a prayer hearing God, Father. Yes, but not the only a prayer hearing God, you are a prayer answering God. Yes. So we say thank you right now, Father. Yes, Father, bless the sick and shut ins right now, uh -huh. Father. Bless the bereaved families right now. Just let them know there is no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot heal. Yeah. Father, you are worthy right now. Father, you are worthy, Father. Father, I thank you right now, Father. Every man, every soul, sister, Lord, is still the same, Father. We all have Thank you. 
and our musicians for those beautiful selections this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Are you ready? Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for waking me up this morning to bring me here. I praise Him for that. Hallelujah. And we thank our pastor for this opportunity this morning to bring you the word. And most of all, we thank you, the ones that are here, we thank the ones out in TV land or internet land or whatever land <laughs> for tuning in this morning. We praise God for you. Right now, I would like to pray. Please bow your head as we have a moment of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to see yet another day. Yes, yes. Lord, we thank you for our lying down last night and our getting up this morning. Heavenly Father, bless each and every family that's represented here today, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray that you forgive us for our sins, Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, bless our pastor and the First Lady in their absence, Heavenly Father. We love them, Heavenly Father. And we ask you to just bless this entire world, Heavenly Father. We pray that something will be said or done today, Heavenly Father, that will bring someone closer to you. Right now, Lord, it's preaching time. And Lord, I pray that you let me decrease as you increase, Heavenly Father, like never before. Pour your anointing now, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you again, Heavenly Father, for this blessed day. All these blessings we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning, if you have your Bibles, could you please turn to Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes verses 1 through 8. It's a very familiar scripture. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. And it reads as follows. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to win and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. I just read to you Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord add a blessing to read, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. 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 Today, my sermon is going to focus mostly on the first chapter of Ecclesiastes. And the title today is, In Time. times of this corona's pandemic, we need to regularly remind ourselves that God is still in control. That's right. We need to be reminded of his grace and his willing to risk their lives to help others. And we know our first responders and our health care workers are doing a marvelous job and have their PPE on, okay. which stands for personal protective. Gloves and other equipment to, to keep them from spreading the germ from one patient to another. Uh -huh. But instead of worrying about the world and its PPE supply and how much longer we will have that. How much longer will it be in stock? 
Think about God's PPE, which is forever and stands for providence, power, and ever abiding love. In Webster's Dictionary, of nature as a spiritual power. Power means the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others. Ever abiding love means love that continues for a long time, ongoing or timeless. Now I don't know about you all, this world upside down. The Bible, if you read it, has a lot to say about plagues. Jesus predicted such horrific events would come upon the world. So it's no surprise. This world is in a state of confusion and some of the people are in fear. But when we fear, worry, or panic, depression takes over. And we are giving it to Satan's desires. We forget that we have a God on our side. And no matter what the crisis may be, what did he say in his word, Joshua 1, 5? I will never leave you nor forsake you. We must trust for deliverance from God. Why? I'm glad you asked that question. If you read your Bibles, you know that delivered, delivered Noah, he delivered Noah when he instructed him and his family into the ark after a long quarantine. When the death angel came through Egypt, they were told to mark their door with the blood of the lamb. Prepare a meal and wait for the deliverance of the Lord. When King Nebuchadnezzar decided to put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, they refused to bow down. Our God, who is able, delivered them from the fiery furnace. If he could deliver all of them, you know he can deliver us. This brings it a little closer to home. While we wait on this pandemic to pass, we must not forget that the Lord spoke to the Spanish flu in 1918, the Hong Kong flu in 1968. He spoke to Ebola and HIV. They were identified, contained, and now they're under his control. God is able and will deliver us from this too. This too shall pass. Psalms 46, 1 through 2 tells us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though there is trouble, trouble on the horizon everywhere, you look troubles in your homes, in your communities, your state, the nation, and around the hemisphere of the world. Uh -huh. The devastating weather conditions on the East Coast, earthquakes in North Carolina, uh -huh. manufacturing plant in Beirut blew up, yeah. killing 100 people. Wow. But you know what? Uh -huh. Even through all of this, as I stated earlier, uh -huh. God uh -huh. is Girl. still in control. When trouble, fear sets in, and we know fear is a strong feeling. It can sometimes drive you insane if you live. You may ask, why did the pandemic happen at this particular time? I thought 2020 was going to be a great year. Huh, it is, you still here, aren't you? But sometimes not having the answers can leave us confused and anxious. The Bible reminds us that we are not alone. We can seek refuge in God's loving arms. All we have to do is call on Him. You can call on God 24-7. You'll never get a busy signal or this number's been disconnected. He will answer your call. We do not 
don't have to fear what state the world is in because as little kids, we used to sing a song that says, he has the whole world in his hands. And if he's got the whole world in his hands, we don't have to worry about coronas. You hear what I'm saying? For we live by faith and not by sight. Also is invisible right. to the eye. All right. But we as Christians know that he lives in us. All right. All right. We just need to trust and obey right. because that's the only way. So I ask you this question. Why are we treating the virus as if it is bigger than God? Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, why are we treating this virus as if it is bigger than God. We are doubting God's ability to help us through this pandemic and we believe what we see or hear on the news instead. And believe that Jesus is working behind the scenes to help us through this difficult time. But we need to remember he still has not left us. That's right. But right now you may feel distant from God because we're not able to actively attend church or participate in Sunday school or Bible study class at church. It's hard to stay faithful when we are isolated from our sisters and brothers. But we still can pray, we can witness, and we can read our Bible every day for encouragement and advice. We need to trust and believe that God is still looking over all of his children and giving them strength. He is blessing us and we don't even realize it. You're blessed to be able to, some of us here today, you're blessed to be able to look at us some, through the Facebook. You're blessed to get up this morning. He's blessing us and we don't even realize it or appreciate it. We are blessed because the pandemic did not stop God's children from praising and worshiping his holy. Through the internet, Facebook, on prayer conference calls, networking. You know the devil is mad right now. All right. All right. We are more than conquerors. Right. And we have to have our whole armor of God on. Our whole armor, not pieces of it, the whole armor. And when we put on the whole armor, the devil can't penetrate it. And we would be honoring our Lord. And you know what? Nothing on this earth can hold us down. Scripture says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In other words, live for today and get through today. Since being struck in cork, stuck in quarantine, Many of us have lost loved ones. God bless their souls. We've lost jobs. We can't pay rent. And we worry about the safety of our children when and if they go back to school. We worry about what the future will hold. This is normal anxiety to have this unprecedented time. Excuse me. God wants us to stay focused about the present because while you are worrying about the future your child may be struggling with a project and needs your attention now don't get so wrapped up in what might happen that you forget to be aware of what is going on right now let me say that again don't get so wrapped up in what might happen 
that you forget to be aware of what is going on right now. Tomorrow's troubles cannot be fixed today. So we need to ask God to give us guidance for living today, one day at a time. Because God has his own timetable. Many people, whether Christians or not, are judging how the world's governing bodies are responding to the COVID-19 crisis. They scream and show on social media saying that the government is doing too much. Or even some may say too little. God wants us to listen. To save our lives. Like wearing our mask. Mm -hmm. Keeping a distance of six feet from one another. And stopping large mass gatherings. Mm -hmm. Romans 13.1 says... Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Therefore, we may be a little inconvenienced, but it is showing God you respect his authority and in the long run saving your life and others' lives so that you can hold on just a little bit longer, give you more time in this world to serve God who loves you. Now, I admit the COVID pandemic has completely shaken our world into something we never ever imagined would happen. It may seem a bit scary, but know that God has not abandoned us. He is still providing us with love, grace, strength, and guidance during these difficult times. Trust in His plan for our world and take things one day at a time. I've seen him work in my life, and I know he would do the same for you. Yeah. He's my friend, uh -huh. and I highly recommend he will stick closer to you yeah. than any brother and love you like no other. Amen. We need to trust in God. Hold on a little while longer. We don't have to wait until our world is falling apart to seek God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. I leave you with this scripture which can be found in Ecclesiastes 3, 14. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken away. God does it so that people will fear him. I recommend today, if you don't know him, the doors of our church are open to you and we're extending an invitation to you to get to know him by joining church by letter, baptism, or Christian experience. Acknowledge. Believe, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for our sins. But he didn't stay dead. He rose. He rose with all power. Not some power, but all power. Join him today. Accept him today so you can escape from a burning hell. Because God's got a blessing
they enter something that you will go out and tell others. And let them know what great God we serve. We give God a hand clap of praise. Because he is true to his word when he says in Joshua 1 5, I will never leave you. No, for say. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for allowing us to come and worship you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you. And every other day, Heavenly Father, that you have blessed us with. Now as we depart, Heavenly Father, give us safe passage back to our homes, Heavenly Father. Lord, put your arms of protection around us as we yes, go through the yes. coming week, Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you. We magnify you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for all ages, now and forevermore, let us all sing. God bless you and have a safe trip back home.